Okay, section 7.5 is a really important one. Uh, we're trying to integrate section 7, 1 to 7, 4. No pun intended there. But um, So the question is, you know, how do you know when to do which integration techniques? So let's, let's, let's investigate that. But first, let's, let's summarize all the methods. Actually, there's five methods. Don't forget about the good old u sub substitution. This is something from chapter 5, but uh, I, I think good advice would be always try this first. Some of the inter integrals, you may not even need to use any of this fancy stuff. You can just make a u sub substitution. Other times what will happen is you'll, you'll make a u substitution and then the integral turns into something that you can de deal with. Like in this, in this particular case, let's see, we've got the integral of uh, cosine square root of x dx. Um, if you make a, sub, a u sub, I, I'm actually going to use z, and I use z because I like to save u uh, for my integration by parts. Isn't that silly? But anyway, um, uh, if you let z be square root of x, then dz becomes 1 over 2 square root of x dx, and then dx becomes 2 square root of x dz, or 2z dz. So we're, we're substituting not only for, for square root of x as being z, but we're also substituting for dx. So dx becomes 2z dz. Anyway, so the integral becomes, at least it becomes something that you should rec recognize. This one looks a lot like perhaps integration by parts. z cosine z dz. Why? Because integration by, by, by parts is, is useful whenever you have a product. Uh, it's also kind of a powerful technique that's a good um, kind of a standby. If you run out of other ideas, you should try integration by, by parts. You may have to do it more than once. And unfortunately, some, sometimes it gets kind of messy. Uh, <clears throat> one helpful thing to remember is if you're trying to figure out, if you're using integration by parts, <clears throat> which to be u, which to be dv, let u equal x to the power unless you see a not natural log or inverse trig function. That, that's a simple way to, to remember it. So in this particular case, we'd let u equal um, z, and dv would be cosine z dz. That makes du dz and v sine z. So you just you get uv minus the integral of v du. So and the integral of sine z would be negative cosine z, right? But there's a not, not negative sign here, so it's just z sine z plus cosine z plus c. All right. The other, t another type of um, technique we learned was uh, trigonometric inter inter integrals. Now, the ones we looked at mainly in my in my class, we looked at powers of sine and co cosine. Remember, if whichever power is odd, that's where you break off one of those and, and make that your du. Now, if they're both odd, then it doesn't make any di difference which which one you you use. Uh, so, so if, if the power of sine is odd, you break off a sine and let u equal cosine. If the power of cosine is odd, you break off a, a cosine and you let u equal sine. Uh, what if they're both even? Then you use the reduction formulas <coughs> for sine and co cosine. The other one we looked at a lot was um, this one, powers of tangent and se secant. Remember, if, if the power of tangent is odd, you break off a tangent and a secant. That's going to be your du, so you let u equal secant power of secant is even, you break off a secant squared, let u equal tangent, and this thing will be your, d, d, your du. So the question was, well, what happens if uh, the power of tangent is even, power of secant is odd? Well, it's, it's usually kind of a mess. That's kind of the hardest case. And the general strategy is to write everything in terms of c, secant. So the question is, why would you do that? Why, why, why would you write everything in terms of secant? Why wouldn't you just write them in terms of sine? And the answer is, Sorry, tangent, but um, secants are generally a little bit easier to inter integrate than, than tangents. You can integrate tangent, which is, uh, what, the natural log of absolute value of secant. You can integrate tangent squared, but to do that, you'd have to write it in terms of secant squared, right? Anyway, it, it just turns out that the, t the secants are easier to integrate. Integral of secant, natural log of absolute value of secant plus tangent. Integral of secant squared is tangent. Everyone's favorite, the integral of secant cubed. Secant fourth is pretty easy to inter integrate. Wouldn't you break off a secant squared, make the secant squared your du, and then write the other secant squared in terms of tangent? Anyway, so that's, that's my advice on that last case. Trig substitutions, that, that's a pretty useful technique. Uh, 
re remember the, the easy way to re remember when to do what is look at what what helps you if you if you let x equal a sine theta inside the square root you're going to get one minus sine sine squared which is going to turn to a cosine squared so it allows you to get rid of the square root so you always use the substitution that allows you to get rid of the square root uh, partial fractions partial fractions is used whenever you have a rational expression now there's going to be sometimes when you can use partial fractions and sometimes when you can't um, look at these two examples um, this first one you can factor this so I would suggest on this first one to factor and I would use partial fractions uh, instead of a trig substitution but on the second one since you can't factor it then you would have to complete the square on the bottom and use a trig substitution you let x minus 2 equals tangent theta I believe integral of ln of, uh, square root of x dx my, my, my temptation would be to make a substitution here right but, but a, a question you should even ask before that is can you simplify anything it turns out using your rules of logs isn't this just the natural log of x to the one half which you can bring down in front so it might you, know, you might find it easier to do that even because if, if you bring down the one half in front of the integral you get ln of x which is a simple it's probably one of the simplest um, integration by parts we've done this before u is ln of x dv is dx and you end up with one half of this thing uv minus the integral of v du they cancel you just have dx so the final answer would be one half ln of x, one half x ln of x minus one half x plus c okay but unfortunately they're not all that easy are they here's one uh, what do you think we should do on this one Let's see, you see an inverse tangent, you see an x squared, Is there? A, can we simplify this? Probably not. I think most people would probably be suspicious, maybe integration by parts here. If you do choose integration by parts, then remember the, the rule, you're going to let u equal the inverse tangent, not x to the negative 2 power. So then du is dx over x squared plus 1, uh, dv becomes x to the negative 2 dx, so v becomes negative 1 over x. So you get this, uv minus the integral of v to u. That's why this is a plus. Now we have a decision to make on this next one. We, we could use a trig substitution, I guess x equals tangent theta, or we could also use partial fractions. And, and I, I, I'm going to vote for partial fractions. It just seems like it's a little bit easier. I mean, not much. Generally, if one of them's hard, the other one's hard too. That's how I think of it. But let, let, let's go partial fractions on this one. So it would be a over x plus bx plus c over x squared plus 1. Clear the fractions. If you compare the coefficients, uh, you first of all let x equals zero, so a is one. Then, if you compare the coefficients of x squared and x, you end up with a equals one, b equals negative one, and c equals zero. So then, when you when you finish this problem, you have to integrate uh, one over x minus one over one, minus x over x squared plus one on this last integral. So if you put a two on the x and a one half outside. You end up, they, then you have du over u, so that's where that one half comes from. Here's a hard one. I think this is hard. Maybe you don't. What do you do? How do you start this? Well, the way you start it is try let it, letting u, uh, I'm going to use z in here. Let z equal 1 plus e to the x. Then dz is e to the x dx. If you solve for dx, though, you get dx equals dz over z minus 1. I'm going to have to go a little bit quickly here, so you may have to hit the pause button. So you end up with this. Now what do you do? Well, let's make another substitution. I'm running out of letters here. W is the square root of z. Then if you do that, you get that w squared is z. dz equals 2w dw. So you get this. Now what do you do? Well, this I'm, I'm going to try to use partial fractions here. But do you understand? Maybe we should do a long division first. So you, you write it, you break it up into, into two fractions. Now on this one, I think I'm going to use a partial fraction, though. See? I'm going to use partial fractions on this one. And so you end up, you may have to check this, I get, I get a equals negative one-half, b equals one-half. So when you finish it, you get, um, you get this. And then you, you substitute in terms of z. And then at the end, oh, uh, by the way, I also, uh, I, I combine those. And then at the end, you, um, you, can, you can write in terms of x. Okay, let me give you one to try. Try this one right here. Hit the pause button. Try this one. Hit the, hit the pause button, and then I'll let you check your answer. There's the answer. We'll see you later.
Bye-bye.